Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. NURSA this week began its public hearings on ESCOM's regulatory clearance account application and will be making a determination by the end of February. Engineering News Editor Terence Creamer was in Cape Town for the start of the hearings and has kept a close eye on this developing story. He joins me now. Hi Terence. Hi sir. Um, so ESCOM has already been granted five yearly increases of 8% until March 2018. Why has it submitted another application? Well, under the rules of this multi-year price determination, uh, there's a regulatory clearing account, and that allows for ESCOM, if they've under-recovered both on the revenue and the cost side, to approach the regulator with a, an application. Vice versa as well, if they'd over-recovered, the, the regulator would be approaching to recover that back in the form of an adjustment to the tariff. So it's a, it's a risk mitigation tool in a price determination that has a, a long life of five years so that uh, both sides are able to recoup either losses or gains that are made during the period. And what ESKIM has done is they've made their submission for the first year of this five-year determination, so that's 2013-14, so it seems like a long time ago. And uh, they are asking for 22.8 billion, uh, 22.8 billion clawback. 11.4 uh, billion of that relating to lower sales volumes during the period and uh, the rest of it mostly related to primary energy and the biggest portion of that is an extra 8 billion that they spent uh, during that year on diesel costs to run the open cycle gas turbines. Now this in a context where the regulator had approved around 2 billion for that year um, and they spent 10 billion in that year and it was a trend that we would see repeated in subsequent years. So ESKIM has made an application to claw that back and what uh, um, NURSA has to do now is to apply a prudency review as to whether that additional expenditure as well as the, 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 volume, the variation on the volumes was prudently incurred uh, and that is th that's really uh, what this is all about uh, um, and it really sits with NURSA now to see whether this application which seems to have been done within the rules and have, has put all the um, different elements together and components together and has been put before NOSA, whether those additional costs were prudently incurred and whether this big variance on the revenue side was also uh, prudent, uh, prudently incurred. What are some of ESCOM's main arguments in favour of this tariff application and um, how has the response been from some of the stakeholders? Well, ESCOM has uh, been fairly uh, clear that they've been diligent in the way it's been uh, applied for this. They've, they've already looked at all the, the numbers, they've done it mathematically correctly and in terms of the rules. And uh, to add credibility to that claim, they, they uh, appointed Deloitte to do a review of, of the application and Deloitte actually did present to, so to stress that both in terms of the rules and in terms of the figures that were put before uh, NURSA, these have been uh, these are accurate and are based on a fact uh, on a, a fact based and uh, verifiable data not that they've gone back to the level of in invoices or anything like that but they've gone back to audited financial statements um, and obviously there's a there's a big pushback from uh, all in society business and civil society and it's almost like deja vu again <laughs> um, and uh, we're seeing this pushback in the form of you know the, the, you know is is Eskom really serious in coming at a time when the economy is in such dire straits for an application for additional uh, tariff increase. Now, if they do get everything they ask for, um, it will take the tariff up to close to 17% for from April 1 this year, uh, which is obviously going to have a knock-on effect. They've already got, as you mentioned earlier, the 8% from April 1. So this would be in addition to that. So business and civil society are, are, are raising a lot of concerns about the affordability of this on consumers and on business, particularly in the difficult economic climate. There's also been quite a lot of uh, focus on whether, the, you know, this is really uh, um, South Africans having to pay for ESCOM mistakes, having to run the, the OCGT plant so aggressively uh, because of uh, maybe errors in the way they did their maintenance and the poor maintenance practices. Should South Africans be paying for that? You know, the, the big variance between what they actually sold uh, in terms of gigawatt hours during that year versus what was estimated, why was, it, why was there such a big variance? Um, was this an overestimation on Eskom's part? 
and were they over optimistic and why why did they ever apply for such a an optimistic sales scenario so there are a number of areas of pushback and the issue now is for um, a, a NURSA which is also being very diligent in taking this process around the country although a number of the hearings have been cancelled because there aren't as many presenters in a number of provinces but they have uh, taken uh, uh, time out um, to take this uh, to allow the public to make these submissions and uh, this process started this week and will continue to the 5th of February where it ends in Gauteng. So there's, a, there's, there's enough time is being given for people to raise their concerns, although I think the timing of it was also there, there was a, some concern raised uh, by a number of both municipalities and civil society. This was really released during the holiday period in South Africa and also it's not ideal in terms of municipal budgeting, uh, for instance, where uh, the determination is going to be made at this time when they would like to have more certainty in the budgets they're going to be putting forward and there's deadlines around that as well. So there are concerns around the time but uh, this has happened <laughs> regularly as well and uh, 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 NURSA has I think gone out of its way to make sure that South Africans voices are heard. How do you think NURSA is likely to respond to this application? Well I think we've got uh, history on our side here yeah, and every time Eskim does approach NURSA we have noticed that, uh, um, or everyone has noticed, that they generally don't give exactly what Eskom um, asks for. Well, Eskom's asking for a lot in this instance, basically a doubling of the tariff, uh, more than doubling of the tariff from 8%, adding another 8.6%. All told, I think they don't expect either to receive um, the full amount. I think the issue is how big the gap is going to be between what Eskom has. I think there's some legitimate aspects to the application and then there's going to be this interpretation of what is imprudent uh, in the application and that really is going to be something that NURSA, uh, everyone has left in NURSA's court. No one's prepared to, at the hearing so far, to really make a, uh, a suggestion as to what is prudent in the application, what is imprudent in the application. So the regulator is going to have to sit down, uh, look at what they feel can be justified and should be passed through to the consumer and uh, we will make they will make that determination known before the end of February as I understand it on the 26th of February so I'm sure there'll be a lot of attention paid to that announcement. Thank you Terence. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.